Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. This video is going to be about a homemade dump trailer that I've been working on for a few years now. And I originally built it for hauling dirt. Uh, I've been doing a lot of excavating in the backyard and probably hauled about 200 loads of dirt away. But I wanted to also make the trailer more universal where I could uh, self-load piece of equipment or whatever I want to. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much what this video will be about, and it'll be uh, showing some modifications. I've thrown in some clips of some different jobs um, that I've used it for so far. Um, I have showed this uh, trailer in another video, but I wanted to make this one uh, more strictly just to the trailer. Uh, so anyway, these are just a few different clips showing some of the different uses. Here I'm unloading a Delta drill press a gang table. I think this one originally had four drill presses uh, mounted on it. And one nice thing I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to have the winch suck something to the trailer if needed and these are just some big bowl gears off of some ajax compressors that we parted out a few years back and in here i just doubled it up i just wanted to get a feel for uh, the lifting capacity and here's where i decided i need to make some modifications the vertical arms that go down from the trailer up are fixed and when I loaded the bridge board I knew I needed to have the mass go higher so in this video you'll see where I completely redo those arms right there I'll redo and make lower brackets that attach to the trailer then up on top I'll make a socket that goes in the original pipe and I'll completely redo the pulley system and put a double pulley instead of a single pulley and here I'm going to start with a found pipe that one would slide in the other, but on this particular pipe it was a little too heavy a wall, so I got to trim down just that one thicker pipe. Now the new vertical arms will be one pipe slid inside the other and here I'm just machining a groove in it and right there I have some wobble sockets on the end and what those are are Kubota three point arms that I've cut off and welded into the pipe. So whenever I raise the move boom up or down it has to be able to adjust and that's where the uh, wobble sockets come in. In the next clip, you'll see where I heated up that bend and straightened our arm out. And then you'll see where, uh, right there, it shows where I straightened it out. And now I'm going to work on the pieces for the upper support, right there. The 
the original vertical arms were just some pipes that slid into some sockets that I had welded at the top. So what I'm doing here is these will be welded together and then just a short piece of stub pipe welded to them, you know, that'll form a little clevis. And then they'll pop up in the upper pipe sections, um, you know, for the new vertical arms. The next clip will be making these lower brackets that will just bolt right to the trailer and then the lower section of the vertical arms will attach to the other half of the brackets. Here I got them just tacked together so when I drill all the holes they're all uh, the exact same dimensions. Okay, that center plate right there gets welded solid to both of the side plates. That way the load is pushing on that plate and not on the bolts themselves. Those brackets are now done. Now I'm going to build this upper pulley system. When I first built this, I put just a single pulley up on top. And now I want to start pushing uh, the limits on how heavy I can load and to take some uh, strain off the winch itself I want to start splitting the cable every time you split the cable it, uh, I believe it cuts it in half um, so anyway this chunk of steel I got right here I don't know what it is it's almost like a piece of forged round material um, it's really hard on the outside skin but once I got through it you know, it seemed to machine better and better uh, the farther I got into it. But this will be the, uh, what I'll make the two new pulleys out of. This piece of material was so untrue, what I wanted to do is machine one side, flip it around, and then clamp it back up into jaws. Because at some point, I'm going to have to go to the bandsaw, cut one of the pulleys off, and then go right back into the chuck. And there's no way, as rough as the other material was, I could have I, I could have put it back in there and had it even close. I tend to do this quite a bit and I haven't showed it before but a lot of times if I know I'm going to be using the boring bar I, I don't bother with the centering drill and I'll just uh, take my luck with uh, just throw a drill bit in there and start drilling and if the drill bit starts to wander what I got in there is just a tool cutter spun around backwards and what I'll do is as I start drilling I'll just bring the cutter up against the drill bit start putting a little bit of pressure on it and then back it out you know and if it doesn't quite true up you know then 
you know, repeat, but once you start pushing on the drill bit, it almost acts like a center point on one side. And with the angle of the drill bit, when you back it out and then go back in, it normally trues it up really nice. And anybody that's ran bigger bits in the lathe, you know, you always know how, you know, until you get the bit actually in the hole, you know, it kind of wants to dance around a little bit. So the same thing, I just bring the cutter up against it, just steady the drill, the drill bit, and it uh, works very nice. Now, I've already mentioned how uh, tough this material is, kind of unknown material, but I ground up this cutter, and as long as you're feeding the cutter in and uh, putting it to work, it would do pretty good. If you tried to just kind of, you know, go in lightly, it would just chatter like crazy. So you kind of had to commit to it once you dug in, you know, you had to feed it in, and then it did an okay job. Here I'm just feeding in this part off tool, I'm knowing it won't go all the way and make the cut, but what it's going to do is allow me to put it back into the lathe and get it squared up nice. Now this is why I originally, when I first started machining that chunk of steel, I machined the one in and flipped it over to go into chuck because I knew it was going to go into the bandsaw and then right back into the chuck again and that way it just kept the uh, machine portion of the pulley you know accurate enough for what it's doing okay here you can see this section that I uh, you know ran a part off tool in and what that does for me now is it gives me a nice true edge for me to go in with my bearing and uh, center it up
Okay, I can now got my farmer's fit. Uh, I learned many, many years ago. Uh, sometimes you try to get your tolerances too tight, and when stuff gets out in the weather, um, it ends up giving you some problems. You know, so now I got just enough clearance where I can pack some grease in there and um, have it do its job. Here I got an old water pump shaft out of an 817, which is perfect diameter for the pin that'll go through the pulleys. Um, if you watch my channel at all, I, I reuse an uh, awful lot of stuff whenever I can. Okay, here I'm getting ready to torch off uh, those ears, that anchor point, and then the two ears that were on a single pulley, and then the new double pulley one will be welded in its place. Here you can see, you know, the way the pulley works. Every time you split it, it just um, takes that much load off of the winch. Here, getting ready to tack it uh, into place, and then I'll pull the pulleys off before I weld it up. Okay, here after welded it up, it uh, it actually stayed lined up pretty good, but I went ahead and popped the uh, seven eighths reamer in there because I want to be able to pull that pin in and out real easy when I'm not using it. I want to take the pulleys out of there. My goal for now is to be able to self-load the same amount of weight as the trailer itself, which means that single snatch block right there needs to go. And in the next clip here, I bought two of these three-ton snatch blocks from the scrapyard a while back, and I'm going to actually take both of them and make one out of it. But what I would like to do is the trailer's right at about 4,000 pounds. And I want to be able to self-load at least 4,000 pounds. And then I'll work up from there. You know, just see how, uh, see how everything goes. Here I'll start with grinding those welds. Pull those nuts off. And it'll eventually get uh, two new pins.
Okay, here's my plan for the new snatch block. I'm going to weld the side plates together and just double them up on the sides. And then, of course, machine the pulleys. That's the old original pin that goes bye-bye. And then on the pin that holds the hook, I'll have spacers on either side. And if I want to just thread the cable through one pulley, then I'll just put both spacers on. In this application, they'd be on the right-hand side. So the hook's always pulling straight off from the pulley. If I decide to uh, double, you know, run the both pulleys, you know, then I'll put the spacers on both sides. Um, just want the hook pulling, pull nice and square, however the cable's set up. And here you can see these pulleys are for slightly smaller cable, so I, I got to go in and open them up. And what I've done here is I want them a little cleaner looking after I weld the plates together. So I ground those little ears, so when I weld it up and then sand the end down, it'll be a little cleaner look, but there'll still be some weld left holding them together. Now here I got another old Waukesha 817 uh, water pump shaft with the spacer. And that spacer is made to where when the water pump shaft gets tightened up, it, it gives support for the two bearings. And anyway, that spacer is the perfect size to fit the pulleys. So all I got to do is just polish it up, cut it to length, and drop a 7 8 ream through the center of it and it's ready to go. Okay, here I'm getting ready to tack it up. Actually, I'll weld the halves, and then I'll just put a couple tacks to hold all four pieces together until um, I'm done machining the two new holes. Here, getting ready to uh, bore the two holes. And uh, normally I would put like T-slots in the table and then just put some spacers and run the bolts into the T-slots. But I have an eight inch riser block on this particular bridge port, which moves everything up much higher. So here I just put some nuts on some longer bolts, put a couple pieces of aluminum on it to where when I tighten it up, it helped grab the nuts. And then just kind of tighten it up. And good enough for what I'm doing. This is just an old 7 8 kind of a junk uh, end mill that I went over and sharpened it up. And um, it's just going to pop a 7 8 hole through all four plates.
Here we got a 13 16 in mill popping the hole in it that will hold the hook. Here I'll just open up the groove into where the cable will bottom out in the bottom of the groove. I was kind of surprised to see how hard these pulleys were, but, you know, the harder the pulleys are, the longer they're going to last. And here we have the snatch block done, ready to put to work. Okay, here's something else I decided it needed. You can see the sharp angle that the cable comes up. I decided it needed a roller there where the cable came out came up against a roller 
and um, what it had was a regular winch opening that was not a roller and I didn't like the amount of force it was putting on it so what I have here this is an old roller that uh, we acquired at work somewhere that is pretty thick heavy metal um, does have ball bearings on the end and I just decided to just fabricate something where I just welded it up those two holes the first hole I drilled the wheel was kind of rubbing the plate so then I had to re-drill the hole that's why it's kind of blown out on top and I just went ahead and welded it up solid and the opening there the two bolts that hold it on um, it just replaces the cover that I have that seals the hole here's a good picture showing the pipe inside of the pipe and I decided I needed to drill one more hole and raise it up even a little bit more. Okay, earlier I torched off one of those little ears that was on the left hand side and now it's going to get welded up on top. And the reason for that is now since I have the double pulley on the main beam there and a double pulley snatch block, I want the snatch block to be able to go all the way up as tight as possible for travel. And in order to do that, I needed to get this up on top so I can get the crimp of the cable up out of the way. And you can see right there, right there's the crimp, you know, and now that's about as high as I can uh, take that and have it out of the way. Okay, here I'm ready for another test run. I got the, uh, the new double snatch block on. I got the roller up in the front and ready to see how it works. Okay, I'm not happy with that at all. But when I put the double uh, rollers on top, I wasn't planning on putting a double snatch block. I like the way the cable's running through there to where it gets that clamp or that crimp on the cable out of the way. So what I got to do now is take the lower snatch block apart and then just machine uh, the inside of two of the pulleys so I can get the cables uh, to line up a little bit better. Now these snatch blocks were originally 6,000 pound per snatch block. So they're kind of way overkill for what I'm doing. So by machining off the inside on uh, two of the pulleys, they're still going to be super strong.
Now where I'm machining it, I'll leave the uh, bronze bushing protruding out just a little bit. That just gives it a little gap between the two pulleys. All right, I got Andrew and Jack, my uh, future son-in-law, giving me a hand. This is it for a comparison shot. We're just gonna compare this uh, safe to another one. You'll see in a minute. Okay, here Jack is standing in front of the 2,800 pound safe, and that's the one I'm giving to my oldest son. That's the 6,500 pound safe that I just got back I sold it about 19 years ago and I just recently got it back but anyway here's the uh, everything's working great now so here is the first loading of the uh, 2800 pound safe I don't have a good picture, but the cables and the pulleys line up much better now.
And here we're about 30 something miles away at my oldest son Matt's uh, house, getting ready to offload the safe and put it in his garage. Now the key to making this work good is you can see the blocks all the way at the back of the trailer. So when I'm using the trailer, I'm actually using the weight of the trailer to balance everything out. Where if I did not have those blocks in the back, it would just load the springs terribly. Um, I haven't decided yet. I kind of like just carrying a couple blocks with me because if I ever overload it, all I got to do is just pull forward and then just go back and pick the blocks up if they happen to get stuck. He's got a little lip going into the into the garage, so we're just kind of figuring out the best way to get over that lip. And what we end up doing is just putting some plywood down. It's easier for it to roll off of the... So this did both of them. You can transition pretty good. Okay, so is it lined up pretty good?
on track. Okay. Are we ready? Ready, ready. Okay, so that was very successful, loading the safe, hauling it 30 miles, and unloading it. But I still didn't reach my target goal for now, uh, which is to be able to self-load um, something basically the same weight as the trailer. Well, this is some older footage when I actually weighed the trailer. And with me standing on the trailer, it was like 3,900 pounds. And I know I'm not that big of a guy, but I wanted to come up with something equal to the weight of the trailer and see what it did. Well, here I have an 1197 Walker Shaw engine, which actually weighs in at about 3,700 pounds. And I thought, well, okay, let's give it out a try and see how that works. Well, I'm very happy with the modifications that I've made so far on the trailer. Um, the boom is at the highest point right now. Um, it will drop down quite a bit. Or you pop a couple pins and it just comes off all, all together. Um, anyway, uh, the next test will probably be... I'd like to go for like 5,000 pounds and see what we'll, what we'll do with 5,000 pounds. Uh, I still need to modify some ramps, uh, the clip on the back, if I want to drag something up into the trailer. But, but for right now, I'm happy with the improvements I made. Um, someday, yes, I would like to get it all sandblasted and uh, painted up and looking pretty. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to check out the video. If you like this kind of content, 
uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, thumbs up are always appreciated. And once again, thanks for watching.